Here is the Toshiba 32-inch HD television. I finally found a place to set this up and use it, but before I do that, I wanted to address some problems that this has. The first problem is the sound. Of course, these LCD flat-screen TVs all don't sound very good compared to the old CRT-type TVs. Simple reason, there is just not enough space to put some decent speakers into these flat panels. But this Toshiba TV sounds particularly bad. Very small speakers in this. Now, of course, it does have a headphone output and a digital audio output. But an external amplifier makes things a lot more complicated than necessary. And I do want to use the internal amplifier in this, which you can see up there. It's a uh, little Class D switch mode amplifier. There is the, uh, the little IC. There are the uh, output filter chokes right there. And that's the speaker output. Looking at the back of the television, you can already see what I've done. There are some speaker output terminals. Just the uh, standard spring-loaded ones. And up there is a selector switch. Here is the inside of the back panel. You can see these tiny little speakers. 8 ohms, 7 watts. They do actually have a pretty decent sized magnet for what they are. Up here is the connection to the motherboard. That's all original. And then right here I've done my modification. There is the switch to switch between the internal speakers and the external speakers connected to this um, terminal right there. This does look quite messy, but I checked everything. There are no short circuits in this mess. The other problem can have very drastic consequences, yet it's easy to repair. When I got this TV at the dump, the main board was bad and had to be replaced. Now, if you look at the main board, there is the main processor chip. And as you can see, there are provisions on the circuit board for a heatsink. There is even a heatsink drawn on the silk screen, but there is no heatsink. So my theory is on the original main board, this processor chip kept overheating until it finally developed a problem that caused the whole board to fail. Now, since I don't want to keep replacing boards in this, I want to add a heatsink to solve that problem. Here is the heatsink that I found. It's big enough to cover most of the chip, and it's flat enough to not get into any conflict with the back panel. It shouldn't block it from going back on. I'm going to position the heatsink like this, with the fins going this way, because if we look at the entire TV, the air as it heats up, rises. So the air is going to flow from down here to up there, and the heatsink is going to be most effective this way because the air is going to flow through it like this. And here is the new heatsink in place. I used thermal adhesive tape to put it on, so hopefully that's going to last. The television has been put back together. It is connected to a Blu-ray player playing an audio CD. Right now you can hear the internal speakers of the television. But I have this pair of external two-way bass reflex speakers connected. So Let's switch between the two and compare.
Thank you.